Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. I'm going to play a video, and then I just wanted to get y'all's take on it. I have my own personal <laughs> opinion, but mm, I, kind of I so definitely much. wanted to see what other black men thought of this black man, black man's <clears throat> opinion of um, his situation with the relationships he has with the mothers of his children. And you guys are in both very different places. When it comes to relationship, you know, as am I. So I just wanted to just see what 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 the temperature was, see what people felt about it, other than myself. Um, because when it hit me, it, it definitely struck me in a very uh visceral place. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna play this video and then I'm gonna let y'all kind of give y'all opinions, critiques, thoughts, etc. Got a bald head nigga with a beard. Uh, oh man, <laughs> it, is, it is a short haired nigga with a beard. Oh, uh-huh, so, it's close uh, enough. Yeah, it is close enough to what you thought it was. Oh, it get kind of violent. The bald head nigga with a beard. I got seven kids and seven baby mamas. Now, for the past few days, I've been going live, telling my story, speaking my truth. And a lot of women having an issue calling me a deadbeat because I tell them I was being irresponsible, yet not wearing protection. But I always tell. Uh, these women that I got pregnant that I do not want to be a father to these children. And I offer to pay for the abortion. Majority of times they'll either take the abortion or they'll take a plan B. But only these seven have kept these children. But the crazy thing about it is they want me to be responsible for some children I told them I did not want. So for some years now, some of them been trying to get in contact with me, access denied, because I, I don't really know why you're trying to get in contact with me. I didn't told you I did not want them kids. So don't expect me to be responsible financially, emotional, spiritually, mentally, or physically with some kids. I, I got seven kids and seven baby mamas. Now, for the past few days, I've been going live, telling my story, speaking my truth. And a lot of women having an issue calling me a deadbeat because I tell them I was being irresponsible, yet not wearing protection. But I always tell uh, these women that I got pregnant that anybody else want to go first? I'll go first. Go on, go. So this is how I feel. All right. I I was trying to give him benefit of the doubt, right? All right, maybe he can find some type of way to explain this 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 shit. All right, I will give him credit. He what he did take some accountability for it. All right, so okay, he acknowledged that he fucked up. I will say okay, he said a phrase. And I often find that people say this phrase right before they want to make some excuse for some fuckery that they did. I spoke my truth. Now, truth, the funny thing about truth is, is no bias to truth. Truth doesn't care about your feelings. It don't care about your financial situation. It don't care about your emotional or mental situation. Truth is what truth is. If your truth makes you look like you were dumbass because you got seven baby mamas pregnant and you you didn't vex. Um, not vex. What is the word for it? Uh, vet. You didn't vet them to make sure that their mental was in the same chapter, same page as you. You can't, you can't blame them. And then it's the simple fact that at the end of the day, those children did not ask to be here, just like you. Just I all I all I want to know is when one of them kids become like 
uh, uh, gets like a scholarship at a um, uh, HBCU, uh, uh, a very high rated college or something, and then go into like professional or you get some kind of money. How you going to act? Are you going to come with the same energy? That's all I feel. Now, as far as the women go, okay, you feel that way. I understand that. But the only the only thing that I disagree with that you did this seven fucking times. One or two. All right, I give you pass. Three. We might be stretching it, but okay. But seven, nigga, seven? At the four, it should be a pattern for you. Like seven? Okay, these chicks, these chicks, these chicks, these chicks. Like most people that have a roster understand they roster. That's the reason they have a roster because they don't want no miscellaneous. They want to just do what they do, be at peace with what they do. And there's no drama. They know that they roster is not going to come with drama. You didn't have this conversation with her. And you continuously went in raw. Continuously, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't back you on this. I can't really support you. Like if it was, because your numbers is too high, and then it's not like it's it's one baby mama, two baby mamas, three baby mamas. Each baby has their own mama. It's seven baby mamas seven nigga seven is the lucky number how are you so unlucky with the lucky num number that's how you know you wrong it's the lucky number you unlucky with the lucky number you at 14 you have seven babies seven baby mamas that's 14 people you're neglecting that's you nigga that's two weeks that's two weeks Niggas, that's 14. That's the amount of days needed to get over COVID. It's 14, nigga. That's you. That's you the problem. You, nigga, you are the fucking problem. You. It's not the, it's not the women no more. It's you. Okay? It's obvious. The, the bitches around you like fucking you. You should, as a responsible man, know that these bitches like fucking you. And you should know that being that these bitches like fucking you, they're going to try to do some things to keep you around. Whether that's their intention or not. Seven times seven is seven plus seven, I should say. Seven, seven. It's the lucky number. I'm done. I'm done. How you unlucky with the lucky number? Okay. So let's dig into the situation. Feel feel free to like you know debate my shit. I, I just want to I want to see everybody perspective. I ain't got no debate. I just got very. Let's dig into this real quick. Seven kids, seven baby, baby mamas, seven different situations and seven different time periods. Okay. First of all, you say you tell everybody you don't want any kids, and every time you choose to be irresponsible. Someone else has to do something to counter your responsibilities. So they have to get an abortion or they have to get a plan B. But being that you're paying for it, that's okay, I guess, in your mind, in your mentality. Um, after the first kid, you saw, okay, this conversation I'm having isn't working. Mm -hmm. So maybe. I, as a man, should take some responsibility for my actions because I know what I want, but I also know what I enjoy doing. I enjoy having unprotected sex with a lot of women. And I know with unprotected sex, semen comes out of my penis, which can impregnate these women. Science. How about I get a vasectomy? That's one option. That way you don't, you don't have to worry about their decisions to keep a child and now you don't have to play a power play based off what someone else wants 
based off your hours and responsibilities. Or number two, at the first child, when you stood on your ground saying that you didn't want to be a father, you do have the option of signing those rights away and having nothing to do with these kids. But you choose not to educate yourself either and be responsible and accountable on those accords either. So no, you may not be a deadbeat, but you are a dumbass. You don't have to want to be a father. You can have unprotected sex with all the women that's going to allow you to have it. Hey, that's the world. You can make your choices, but you must live by your choices. But if you're a dumbass, you're still a dumbass. That's just that. Your choices and decisions have made you a dumbass. Now you have seven kids. They're going to, they, I'm sorry for them, but they're a dumbass father. And nine times out of ten, at least four of the three, four of the seven of them are going to be dumbasses too because they have your dumbass genes in them. Mm -hmm. Make a phone call and get a vasectomy or make a phone call and sign your rights away because those kids deserve better. I don't know about the women because those women, their decision-making skills obviously won't there either because if you're telling them, I don't want to have a child and they're still allowing you to have unprotected sex with them, knowing they're not on birth control either, that's two dumbasses in a situation. Hmm. Bringing a child into the situation knowing that, well, I know he don't want the baby. I don't know what to do with the baby. But the baby here now. The baby. Don't be dumb. Don't continue bringing lives into this world with no accountability over how you're going to provide for these lives, expect the other taxpayers to step in and do it for you. Nah. Sure, sex is fun. But it's also an activity that has consequences if not done correctly. That's an adult activity. You know, now that he brought up the vasectomy and right, you know, writing your rights away and everything, this all sounds real clout chasing. Just you just I mean, did. like, no, nah, it ain't even clout chasing because a lot of people just don't choose to educate themselves and just know how to be an adult and handle man business. If you're out here having sex and there's a possibility of you having a child, you need to know what to do on all the cords. If you don't want to be a father, know how not to be a father. If you want to be a father, know how to be a father. Know how to put yourself in situations and get yourself out of those same situations. That's just it. Some people are raised and bred different. That he made the video. Mm -hmm. Before I had a child, I knew the possibilities in and out of every situation possibility that I could possibly put myself in. Because I know I'm putting this thing in somebody else. This Something may happen. If I'm not ready to be a father, what must I do? To still know, okay, I'm good. I ain't got to do. If I do want to be a father, how do I do that? What steps must I take to be the best at that? That's just that. Some motherfuckers ain't built to take responsibility for their actions. And they built just to be the motherfuckers they are for the rest of the remaining of their lives. Regardless of their age or not. Because you got 60 year olds out here acting the same fucking way that this idiot is acting. And mm -hmm. he's nowhere near 60. Is Sex true. is fun. Yeah, that is true too. <laughs> but the responsibilities around it, some motherfuckers ain't built for it. Mm. Sure. So I don't say you're a deadbeat because you, you you spoke on what you did not want. Cool. You put those expectations out there, but you continue to go with women and, and deal with women that ignore that. You saw that. Continue to do what you want to do. Got what you didn't want. And now it's a child out there that has to deal with this and grow up like that. It is what it is. That's your choice. Ain't really my business. And I can give a fuck less about your kids. But at the end of the day, fuck you recording your shit and putting it on the internet for. Exactly. Just so people can call you a dumbass and, 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 and comment on your shit. Everybody want to be known for something. It ain't even clout. It just motherfuckers just, just want to be seen. Motherfuckers just want to be seen and heard. That's, you that's think that's cool? I know motherfuckers with more baby mamas than that. And them motherfuckers don't want motherfuckers to know. Because it ain't nothing to be proud of. 
You got all them baby mamas and all these goddamn kids, and I guarantee, motherfucker, I'm glad you ain't stepping up because you couldn't possibly step up and do it effectively for all of them. You ain't with Cannon, nigga. 14. He was not Nick Cannon. Okay. Well, I'm very glad that you both went the direction that you went in your responses. Um, it's actually perfect for my response. Um, I want to start by saying that there is a okay, so there's a dichotomy to this. Right? This is not one of those uh Right or wrong is more just perspective. Uh, it's like a spectrum type of thing. Um, but I'm going to say that I'm definitely uh, kind of torn. Uh, on the one hand, I definitely understand everything you said. I, I definitely think that there's a level of uh, accountability that the brother needs to take. Uh, I definitely think that there's a level of understanding of the sexual contract that the brother might need to uh, have. Uh, even a level of responsibility that should be handled afterwards, um, regardless of intent going in, mm -hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> but here's where I divert. So, the first time I watched it, I agree with you and Faith, like, probably wholeheartedly. Like, I mm -hmm. was 100% where you guys were, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second time I watched it, I was still probably there. And then the third time I watched it from that, right? Mm. There's this thing that we always preach on this podcast. It's personal accountability. It's the understanding of so say me and Pat go into a contract with each other. My understanding of that contract is as strong as whatever his ability to live up to the terms that he presents of that contract is. Meaning, my understanding and my ability to react to that contract is only as strong as his ability to live up to the terms that he sets on his end of the contract. So if he says, I'm going to be here on Thursday at 9 a.m., I am entering that contract with the trust that he's going to be there Thursday at 9 a.m. I'm not I'm not going into the contract thinking that he's going to flake out. Mm -hmm. Now, if he flakes out on the first contract and I go into another contract with him seven more times, that's on me. Right? Mm -hmm. But when I listen to this brother, he's saying that he's done this contract with several different women. Because that's essentially what sex is. We want to look at it as a bunch of different things, but it's transactional. It's a give or take. It's I'm trusting you to do something based off the things you told me, and I'm trusting me to do something based off the things I've told you, and we're trusting each other to both live up to whatever that is. I'm trusting you to be as clean as you said you were, unless we both went to the clinic together, or you've shown me pictures. I'm trusting you to have your tubes tied or me to have a vas vasectomy. Because there's men who go against this contract as well. So I just want to be like as as distinct as possible. Like again, we're gonna we're gonna level this back to the beginning of words have made, right? Mm -hmm. So like when we talk about this as a social contract, that's literally what it is. It's me trusting you. So if this dude has trusted a thousand women, let's say, right? And a thousand of them have followed through on whatever terms they set that they had, right? And he trusted them on that and they followed through on that based off of it. And these seven decided to go against that. Does that mean that he's really the bad guy? Or does that mean that these seven who said that I'm going to take birth control, I'm going to get an abortion, I'm going to take a plan B, I have my tube tied, I cannot have kids, I whatever the case may be that they told him at the beginning, because again, the first time, second time, I hear y'all, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a case to be made there. So I don't want to negate that aspect of this, because it is kind of double-sided because again we're only getting his side I get so there's saying. pieces missing 
that we all have to kind of fill in numbers. with our biases, our interests, our intellect, our logic, whatever. We we kind of got to paint by numbers with some of this because numbers, we bro. only get what he's saying on his TikTok or whatever. We don't get her, mm-hmm. her side, her voice, nothing. We don't get none of these seven women back. Mm-hmm. But you have your side, right? And and I'm with y'all. In the case that he took upon this contract and these women said that I want a baby, I love you, dude, or I like you enough to, I would like to, if things go this route, I'm cool with it. I want to have a kid. I don't care. I ain't having no abortion. I'm anti-abortion. I'm anti this. I don't believe in birth control. I'm not going to take a plan B. I don't be- like whatever that case may be. If they told him that he went against that, and he still was like, well, I'm going to take the shot. Well, you- uh-uh. But again, my logic started to kick in on number three. And when I hear a brother saying, this is my policy going in with women. Uh-huh. And these seven women decided to, what I hear is a brother like myself who has had a lot of sexual experience, which means that you have laid out your, you've been who you've been Mm -hmm. and you've laid this out. And every time you laid this out, the women that you happen to been with said they cool with. As a person who has been a victim of a woman who second guesses and then changes her mind, right? And has had to feel the fallout of it. Because unlike this brother, I've been on the end of, I never want to have kids. I don't, I, I'm not ready for that. This is not what I'm on. I also don't want to use protection. How can we do this together? If, okay, we both clean. We've gotten that figured out. Great. We're on the same page. And then I have sex with you. And then I'm telling you, I don't want to have kids. And I'm letting you know this, and you're telling me I'm on birth control, and then you decide not to take your birth control that week. Now we have a child on the way, and then I'm now invested in said child, unlike this brother. But now you decide that now I do want to have an abortion. So now I got to live with the fact that you're taking the child away from me that I actually now want. So what I'm saying is, when we look at this, what I'm hearing from this brother is not a dude that's like haphazardly entering into social contracts with people. It's I'm entering in with the same standard. This is my contract every time. These seven people broached or breached my contract. And now I because they breached said contract, I'm not upholding anything under this. Which now puts the <clears throat> onus back on the woman who There are women out here who say, I want, I don't want this. I'm cool with this. And then when shit happens, oh, I changed my mind and you got to deal with it. No, bitch. That ain't fair either. Because if you had told me that there was a chance that you was going to do that, if you had to put a clause in this contract saying, yeah, I feel like this, but I'm not sure how I might feel when we get there. Then that lets me know. Let me not stick my dick in you. Or I'm going to do so with the warning of you may change this agreement at said time of ejaculation. Shit may feel great enough to you where you say, you know what? I want this nigga to be my baby dad. Well, damn it. All right. At least I knew that it was a change. But you're telling me we are 100% on the same page and then you switch the contract up. That's a different conversation. And that's two different conversations that come from this clip. Like, you got the one conversation of him. Mm -hmm. I enter into this thing knowing that this thing could go fucked up, and I keep doing it. Grant. 100% right. But you also look at, for me at least, I look at most sexual situations as transactions because you give up so much from both ends. Mm-hmm. Both the male and the female give up so much to make that happen in a healthy way, right? Because if one of them fucks up on their end, it becomes so unhealthy for the other. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So like it, it takes a lot. So like I look at that as like a transaction because it's just like you giving your life savings to somebody and they're doing the same with you and you trusting each other like you ain't gonna fuck up my bag, right? I'm gonna still be able to retire, right? You know what I'm saying? And if this motherfucker fumble their in, one of the other party is now fucked. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Going back to it. You got the end of the dude is, yeah, you keep entering these contracts knowing that it's the chance the person may breach. But that's what business is. That's what transactions are. So if he's so wrong because he lays his terms out and he's completely vulnerable and he says exactly what it is and then these women change their mind. Or is she wrong for the fact that oh, well this is what it was and then I changed my mind and now this is and you got to live with that because I changed my mind and I'm the one that actually chooses whether or not the baby's born. See, that's the key. Like, if both parties could make the baby and then they both could, mm -hmm. like, like neither one had to carry the baby or neither one had complete control over whether or not the baby came to full term and cool. But the problem is there's an imbalance there. So when we talk about double standards, that's the double standard of women. They have the power to breach a social contract with any man at any time and then force him into a life that he may or may not have been ready to do. He may have laid out everything. They may have agreed to it. They may. You have women that have signed paperwork and still do this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, now that you said this, I kind of want to see the uh, clip again, even though I know I deleted the shit out. But now I want to see it from this angle. Because as, I, no, I, I, feel you. I consider myself maybe less promiscuous as the average guy. So that's what? Hey, that nigga mad. <laughs> that nigga mad as hell. Man, like. That nigga mad <laughs> as <laughs> fuck. That nigga mad as hell, boy. God damn. They won't even be responsible. Mm -hmm. Yes. I got seven kids by seven baby. Now, that, that, now, I, now, I, that, I, that's the that's that's the legality. accountability for that part. But this is the thing, though. Mm -hmm. There's several different pieces of this. There's the female accountability piece. There's the male accountability piece. There's the legality piece. Mm -hmm. Now, he I, has a legal right to have to take care of these kids. So these women that are putting them on child support are not crazy. Mm -hmm. But are they morally right? Is my question. I'm gonna go. Well, oh, why you find it back? Okay. Everybody I, I, ain't got moral, so I was gonna say <laughs> now, just because I, I I went in on him, that does not negate the fact that the baby mamas really are bad at decision making, especially the seventh one. But that's why I wanted to go here because I, I knew like my, my hope was that you guys would go in on him mm -hmm. so I could present the ultimate. Like I wanted to have that dichotomy of the viewer like living like, yeah, you was thinking this, but what about this perspective? Because in you my head, I want I want to root I for the first couple of times, like, dude, you trip. It's you're wild. I want to see his side, like, but it's like oh, well, you might be right. All right. Now, okay. See, I have one question, but I think you about to ask it. So I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to before I used to be married, just because I don't know where I can go with this, right? But I'm gonna go here again. The reason I think I may understand his situation is because I've been where you have conversations with the woman and you are very clear with her of your intention as far as baby making, as far as what you are willing to do sexually, as far as what your intentions are sexually, as far as what your um, limitations are, as far as what you prefer, as far as protection, as far as uh, 
uh, what you call it, uh, what you call it, the 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 goddamn condom and shit. Mm-hmm. You know that the protection. Right. So, so like you prophylactic. prophylactic. Okay. Rubber. Yeah. So you you you've been very clear, y'all are both. Same and then I've been in this. I've been in a situation where because the woman cares for you so much, or they feel as if this is an option to prevent a decision by you in another part of your relationship, they will then go back on said contract that you've agreed upon. Mm. So we both on the same page going in. During the act, we're both on the same page. Immediately following the act, we're on the same page. But because we go in as Migos, but then you want to be offset. But because something happens now in the time you figure out that you whatever safeguards we used did not work, you are now going to use that as a part of your situation to make things work for you with us. Mm-hmm. And having been a victim of that, I understand how and, and having been a victim on the negative end. Mm-hmm. So I want the baby and then you negate the baby because I am no longer interested. In mm-hmm. So I know what that feels like from his end to like have a clear understanding of what's about to happen. And then because of your flim flammy feelings throughout this, you use these things to become a problem. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that's the act. I, I don't want women to get that confused. Most women don't do this. But these seven the might not do, be those. Them, like, what I'm, again, the first two times I heard what you and Face heard, mm-hmm. a dude that's not taking accountability for his act. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem because a lot of dudes don't. A lot of dudes stick their dick in bitches raw without having any intentions. They act like they like these bitches. They act like they want to be bae. And then as soon as the bra come up, be like, hey, I'm pregnant. Then they fall back like, oh, I didn't know. I don't want to. Eh, you ain't you ain't my. No, but you was telling her how much you cared about her, how much you want to. Like, no, we ain't about to do that. Don't lie. Now, if every day you've talked to this girl, you told her, I don't want none of that. And she said, cool, I'm going to help you. We we both will make sure that none of that happens. And y'all have done so. And then it still happens. Then. And then she decides to go along with something different than what y'all planned. And that's what hurt. Uh-huh. But that's what I'm seeing from this brother. Like the first two times I heard you're a fucked up dude. And then the third time I realized what he's saying. I've told every single woman, this is what I want. That tells me a man that's his, accountable his and understands who he is as a man, what his intentions are, and he's very clear with the women that he chooses to sleep with. That His tone doesn't sound like he's trying to be an asshole. No, it sounds like he's trying to be very clear mm-hmm. and distinct. And for me, as an assertive black man, as a Sigma male and, who doesn't and that's rely why. on other people's feelings, I'm very clear on I understand his perspective. And that may be my body. And inside, inside, like when I first looked at this, I was like, I want to give this guy a break. But it's like that number is what popping in my It's head. a lot. But I also this is what I was but what if say, you fucked a lot of women. That, like I that, fucked a lot of women in my but life. But that's what I was saying to the fact that I got one child is amazing. Like I bet you know of. Uh, I I would say. I no, I, it's just one. All right, I might not. I'm also very cool with a lot of the women I fuck, so I'm I'm good. I'm, I think I'm good. Okay, I might. I'll say I may be a less <laughs> promiscuous as than y'all, all around. Yeah. So in my mind, and usually I'm a person with yourself with one person. With he ain't, he ain't person. Yeah, like I. I'm a person, I just deal with one person at a time because that's all my mind can keep right. calculating my head. After a while, you, you get past two or three, you know, it's like, all right. And the ma- majority of the time, I'm like, all right, I'm looking at you, all right, we're all friends. Call it a day, right? So when, usually when 
I'm looking at stuff like this. I'm trying to put myself in his position to understand what he's saying and see if he's in in the right. But now looking at it as a person, all right, numbers wise, if Mm -hmm. and I mean, with numbers, that's that's with any situation. Like if you if you a person that's hitting 100, the average is 50. You know what I'm saying? There may be one or two or seven in that the slip through the the slip through the cracks. And that's what I'm saying. Like when we talk about ratio, like so again, what I do know is this, and this is where my logic kicked in on the third one. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you the three keys. And Go ahead. and I'm not the one to under I'm not the one to figure out and look at a guy and be like, Yeah, that nigga fuck all the bitches. To me, all <laughs> Yeah, I can't. One thing that nobody's talking about, nobody's speaking on, man. One, one key thing. What? What is it? This nigga pullout game is trash, man. <laughs> but mine's awesome. <laughs> Most niggas do. Like what? We, like what we talking about? Like, all right, like, we gonna we gonna get real. We gonna have a real a real pot hole. Let me let me let me let me let me stop. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. We have a real conversation. Mm-hmm. Most niggas pull out game is trash. Most niggas, if they in the pussy of their choosing, meaning the pussy that they actually wanted to get, pull out game trash. You want to put, you want to bust in that shit, even if you want to oh, cool. okay. So we ain't about to do this to that nigga. Like what we gonna say is this. This is what I will say is based on my logic, and these are the three things that I saw from him. I saw a dude that. For one, is a certain, and again, these are all biases that I have because they relate to things that I hold mm-hmm. valuable or true as things that I care. Mm-hmm. Right, so he's a certain, mm-hmm. not aggressive. He doesn't mm-hmm. seem like the type that's like you will do what I say. It's more like yeah, he don't. This is what I seem like on. the extra alpha dude. So what yeah. I get is sigma male. Mm-hmm. I get this is what I stand on. Are you cool with it? If you are, then let's run. Mm-hmm. I get that most women that he runs into roll with that stigma. Like they cool with that. I get that seven of them women were like, no, I really like you. I'm going to keep this baby. Mm-hmm. I get that as a person that stands on principles and values, he's like, but I said this, we agreed on this, I'm going to stand on our agreement as opposed to what you now feel because of whatever. And he's okay with stepping away from that emotional thing that happens when you realize a kid is on the way. Mm-hmm. Now, for me, I couldn't be him. That That's the other thing. Because once you say it's another being that I help to create that's here. It's hard for me to disconnect. Like once you say it's a baby involved, I mean I'm all in. Yeah, he look. But I've there. also been on that end of we agreed to not have a baby in the first place. Mm-hmm. You was down, and you told me that this was your precaution, and then you negated on those precautions, and because of that, you then took away my ability to have a child. So I get that perspective of like you just didn't fulfill your end of this contract and now you fuck my shit up like so even though I wouldn't be the one that would step away from the kid I get him stepping away from the kid because at the end of the day it still boiled down to to me at what point do we stop Relying on emotion to guide our social constructs and rely on logic. Because to me, logic makes more sense. Like the emotion of things is more individual. How you feel is how you feel. But the greater good is the greater good, regardless of how either one of us feels. Like if the greater good is to make sure that we have enough wheat to make sure everybody can at least have a piece of bread before they go to bed tonight so they don't die. Then me having a feeling about the wheat production is my feeling. 
but I ain't got shit to, that that don't negate the greater good. It just means that that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. And how I feel should never go against the greater good. So if the greater good is between me and you, we got this contract of, hey, we're going to do this, this, and this. And then you, at the end of the day, after we done signed the contract, the contract is printed. It's both of us got our copies that sign. It's in the safe. And now you decide, well, I don't want to do that no more. Hey, fuck you. I got to do this goddamn contract or suck my dick, bitch. If, if I... I say bitch because that's what a bitch do. They go back on contract, male or female. I, if I have to ignore my emotions for the greater good every fucking day, who the fuck are you that you think that you are above ignoring your own emotions for the greater good for everybody else? I do it, bitch. Why can't you? I do it without question. Without any, like, the emotion be there for five seconds and then be like, yeah, but I'm the only motherfuckers that's going to do it, so let me do it. Because if we don't, we end up all dead. Mm-hmm. Like, think about that. If we all just act off of what is best for us individually, you know how many people that is killed in road rage accidents or killed in supermarket disagreements over who's in line first? Or, like, you realize how many people just act off of pure emotion with no regard to what's going to happen after? And then just <clears throat> multiply that. Like, when we talk about slippery slope arguments, a lot of times if it's, it's a fallacy. But in this case, it is a real thing because if if we all just say, Fuck. that's not a slippery slope. That's an honest to God. This world is going to be crazy. You know how many uh, illegitimate babies is really going to be there? When men just say, I'm just skeet. I ain't going to even let you know that I want to have a baby. I don't even care about that. Like when women just say, oh, fuck it. I'm going to be a hoe. You know how many like crazy we, you know how many crazy situations we run into we are when currently people at just pull 8 up billion. and be like, you know what? I'm population, going to eat this person's population. face because I felt like mm. you know how many like wild Courage. situations I held back just because of social etiquette and understanding and social contract of like, hey, I'm gonna be a good person to you just because even though in this moment you might want to knock me the fuck out. That will probably make you feel the best, but it's a social man. We had an example of that earlier when I accidentally knocked over his beer, and I apologize for no, that. I was just I was the spit on me the other week. I was going to add was that different. next. I, I, I was going to add. Was, I was going to add. That, that wasn't on a you thing again. That was, I, I acknowledge that was a me. I I'm not. I, I'm not adept to experiencing that too have handled it in the best way, if that makes sense. Like, I, that's not something that I've, like, experienced, dealt with, and then processed, and then I know how I'm going to do that the next time. Nope. Just happened, and then it was whatever happened in the moment. That was the first time I dealt with it. But I think I did good. I was very honest. I was I was direct about my feelings, yet I did not act on said feeling. And I think that's the key. Right there. Right? I think that's the key that kills women in this situation. And I'm going to play it again for Pat because he did ask for that. But then I'm going to get to my point as soon as I'm done and then I'm going to let Pat and uh, update round out this topic. This place. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Right. To these children. And I offer to pay for the abortion. Majority of times, they'll either take the abortion or they'll take a plan B. But only these seven have kept these children. But the crazy thing about it is they want me to be responsible for some children I told them I did not want. So for some years now, some of them been trying to get in contact with me, access denied, because I, I don't really know why you're trying to get in contact with me. I didn't told you I did not want them kids. So don't expect me to be responsible financially, emotional, spiritually, mentally, or physically with some kids, I I got seven kids and seven. Um, shout out to the shade room mm-hmm. for giving us this. Uh, they are very good at finding uh, fuckery. 
very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Pat, you've heard it again. Mm-hmm. I would say I. My only question is, because it does sound like he is saying this before the act. You know what I'm saying? He, it does sound like he's a man that would have the conversation and will say this before the act. Now, I will say not every not every situation you're going to just end up in that conversation. That's not a conversation that you just like. Nigga, what? Like, I'm talking about like as not far every conversation you gonna end up in the conversation. No, like <clears throat> it's not a that's not a normal conversation you just go into when you like first meeting someone or something like that. And I'm thinking in situations where he's all right. What you mean? Where we're oh, talking, oh, we're at the club, we no, meet some girl yeah, yes, and it it something is. like that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm a, I'm gonna negate that. Mm. Depending on who you are. It's not normal for some people. It is for some. If we've gotten to the point where we talking about fuck, oh, we talk about that. Because I need to know, like, all right, so as a person, mm-hmm. let me be just clear. I, I, I don't care how this come off or, like, whatever. Like, this is part of the conversation, and I think this is the problem. Like, a lot of men and women don't, like, want to have the real part of the conversation and just say what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't like the I don't like the use time. So when I first met the mother of my child, right? When we first had Anna for, she understood all of these things. Mm-hmm. She understood that the possibility of things could happen. And we discussed beforehand what precautions we were both willing to take. <clears throat> We both made some sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And then we went forward. But if we are grown people and we talk about sex, the fuck you mean we ain't having them conversations? So we just so I'm just busting in you raw without saying nothing. I'm talking about you about just letting the... me bust in you raw without saying nothing. We ain't talking about what's gonna happen afterwards. Now I'm not speaking for myself, I'm just talking about what people uh just but brand people problem. talk about. But when I'm as far as me, if you want to talk about me, yes, I do have that conversation Most with that. And like I said, I'm maybe less promiscuous as y'all, and uh that's one of the main reasons why. Like you said, I don't like condoms either. There's always a weird situation when it, 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 you get into play. You're already in the mood, and then you got to put the condom. It, it, yeah, I know some people know how to do it in ways that's, no, nah, fuck that. I don't like condoms either. So being sure, that I you need to put it. Yeah, the, being that I don't, I am less promiscu- promiscuous than maybe the average guy because I'm that cautious. I, hey, i am be honest with you. I'm that scary. It's proven because I don't got no kids. <laughs> so, like, hey, and as you were saying, everybody in the world, except for me, uh, pull out gain is horrible because we're at 8 billion people, human population. So, like, at this point, I can't really say that. I, I can because I'm king pull out. Hey, man, but but that. that's only because my ratio is lower. If my ratio was higher, then I probably would have. Yeah. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you, this is what it comes down to as humans. Right? The beautiful part about being human is that we have free will. We are the only animal that has every other animal is just free breathing. So they're very impulsive. Whatever they feel, they do, they go with. The beauty of us is we have the ability to actually think about our choices before we make them and then act on them based off of that choice. If you live off of the contract you set, you're good. And that's in every situation, but it goes back to when we were talking about honesty a few weeks ago, right? Or a couple of weeks ago, right? Like, the ability of you to have a best friend, it all boils down to you, the ability to be honest with that person. Because if I got to lie to you all the time, at some point, them lies are going to catch up to me, and then you ain't going to want to be my best friend no more. Because now them lies are going to start affecting you because you are in close proximity to them. Um, so, like, when you deal with people that are real people, right? And, and even in families and relationships and sexual situations, like all of these situations, it all boils down to like trust. Like I got to be able to trust that whatever you said is what's going to happen. 
because that's all human interaction is. My ability to understand you is my ability to understand the fact that you told me what your name was and your birthday was and the values that you believe in are actually the things that what you said are true. Like, if you're lying about all that, then what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you're a politician. Basically. But, like, at the end of the day, like, it goes down to, like, when I look at a brother like that, I don't see a man like a lot of people see that maybe he's irresponsible. I see that like he's made social contracts with several different people and they negated on their end. And that's not him being a bad person. That's them people not doing what they said because the reason the, the, the reason that I go so hard for my son is because I said I wanted to. Uh-huh. So whether it had been with the mother of my child or whether it had been with one of the many women I had sex with before then, I let them know that like, hey, I don't want to do this, but I'm cool with this, 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 and this. And if this happens, I'm going to be there. Like, it was all laid out. So Mm -hmm. like, if at any point that my son had been created, I wanted. So there was, there's nothing that's going to keep me from being there for him. But on the flip side, if I tell you I don't want this goddamn car or this time shit or this Airbnb and then we do something, right? And then you change your mind and then all of a sudden I end up having to be responsible for this goddamn Airbnb or this car or this time. Nigga, what? The fuck you mean? I told you I ain't want this shit. Mm-hmm. We agreed upon me not having this shit. Now you're telling me I got to do this shit? But we agreed. We shook hands. We had a contract. We were together on this. This is not me saying what I want. We said we cool with me not having this. So why would you now make me and force me into a situation where I got to do it? That is breach of contract. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think social contracts should be treated as regular contracts. Like, if me and you agree, like, this is what we, like, all right, me and you roommates. For people who don't know this out there. Right? So if I say, hey, I'm cool with this, that, and the third. Pat say, I'm cool with this, that, and the third, too. But then, two weeks later, I come to Pat and say, you can't do this, that, and the third. Blah, blah. I'm fucking tripping. We agreed. We have a contract. We've agreed on this. Like, we both established that this is our norm. I can't just come back and just change that without ha- without it being a agreement again. Like yeah. that's another agreement that gotta take place. It can't just be like I'm just hey, this is what it is. Fuck what you thought. Uh-huh. No, we agreed. I gotta make another agreement with you, or we don't have an agreement. Uh-huh. Then it's just me going about whatever I'm gonna do, but. That also means that I'm taking upon all responsibilities thereof. Mm-hmm. So if I say, hey, we roommate, I'm going to paint this wall back. And you said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. That don't sound I don't like really me because like I like black. black. I think black is a great idea for me. But, but yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> no, you, you wanted, you wanted uh, aquamarine, right? That's, that's but then the, the landlord didn't like black people, right? Mm-hmm. But you knew that. And you told me don't paint it black. Mm-hmm. But then I say anyway, I'm going to do it. And we didn't agree on it. Mm-hmm. The original agreement we had was we were going to keep the walls fucking white. Mm-hmm. That's what they were. We just were going to keep that. And I agree with you. I said, hey, mm-hmm. we shake on this. This is what we're going to do. It's our social contract. We're going to just do this. If I go about and do some dumb shit and you didn't agree to that, you're not responsible for that shit when it when it go wrong. When the landlord come and say, who owed it? Me. Yeah, he didn't want that. He, 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 he told me he didn't like it. He said, I don't want to do what I did. Uh-huh. But I just like it. That's how life should go. Social contract should be held as contract. Like if, if, if you can't just switch some shit up on somebody once you agree. Now if y'all ain't agree in the first place. Or at the last and minute. And you got pushed into the situation in the first place. And that's 
on the person that pushed you. So if somebody, you know, as age you or they are you or they uh, even just took advantage of you, you know, like just kind of, hey, you didn't realize what you were signing up for. There wasn't a clear understanding from both parties of what the contract even was. Ooh. You are the person that put you in that situation to be subject to all penalties thereof. But we ain't about to do this shit here. I think I'm also, I think I was also judgmental off of that for the simple fact that I also know how flip floppy women and decisions when they're feeling some type of way can be. And being that, they are like that. I am less promisc promiscuous because I know that can occur. So I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that drama. So I just avoid it altogether, it it which hinders me at the end because I want I that would, pussy. You have to even limit yourself and who you discuss things <clears throat> with adults. Again, we're talking about adults. You know, mm -hmm. We're not talking about children. We cannot uh, rationalize and make the most efficient, rational decision. Mm -hmm. We're talking about adults who have completely developed frontal lobe and who are completely able to rationalize and make understood and um, conscious decisions about their actions. That, right? So we're not about to do this. There's no reason you should have to limit yourself to deal with another adult when an adult should be able to just tell you what the fuck they want. No. And then live up to that. Like, when we like... <laughs> When when I when I, I usually see them, I peep what's going on, oh, and I just leave that man, shit alone and go to the next. We talking about adult. Yeah, I was in seventh grade when I met. My social contract with him was, "Hey, we we'll just be real with each other. Don't care what else happened <clears> outside of that. You know, you want to tell somebody you can't believe that's on you. <laughs> that's on them dumbass to believe it. But we know what's up." That shit has worked for uh, damn near 30 years. Mm -hmm. I met you. Our social contract was, hey, just be real with each other. You crazy, I'm crazy. It's just different types of crazy. I'm a little off. Will you accept me? Yeah. Will I accept you? Cool. All right. Work for, again, and in 25 years. I might be a All I'm off. saying yeah. is this shit ain't Rock is hot. It's it's literally just living up to whatever contract you had, and then if some shit change, if I decide, hey, I'm hotel and woke, let me let you know. Yeah. Hey, now I believe this. Hey, I ain't cool with this. And that don't mean our original contract is null and void. It just means we've amended it, just like the Constitution. We just added a, a bill of rights to the shit, but it's still the same shit. Like we. Like, it, it's just an understanding. Humans deal well with understanding. When we don't have it, we run them up. We go All crazy. All you got to do is tell a motherfucker who you are. Hey, today I'm this. Today I am pissed off. Like, earlier, we had a situation. Come help Pat out. We get back to the house. I'm giggling my ass off because the mother should have annoyed him and he pissed off. Pat snap. Oh, everybody just leave me the fuck alone. That's all I need. I just needed 15 but minutes. But guess what? He ain't lie about what was going on. He ain't give me some bullshit like, hey, I'm cool. And then treat me fucked up. Which confused. It was a social contract of, hey, I need everybody to leave me the fuck alone. Understood. <laughs> I, just, I just need it like that. But it's simple as that. But people minutes. make these things so crazy. Like, that's a social contract. It's literally that <clears throat> easy of just, when we come on the podcast, sometimes Faze will come in and be like, hey, man, I'm tired today. Mm -hmm. understood your energy might be low let me not judge you for that because you don't let me know what the contract is it's my it's up to me mm -hmm. to reschedule or do i want to keep on going with knowing that you're tired mm -hmm. you're giving me the information it's the same thing with relationship hey if i tell you that i'm a freak and then this girl decide later on in the relationship oh i can't but, but i told you you agreed and you said you liked it and you were fine with it and that's what we were going to do. You ain't had a problem now, with a put money on your ass. said contract, let's talk. Ooh. 
But don't just change the contract without any discussion. Like all contracts start with a negotiation. You were talking there's that a, shit earlier. A take, there's a discussion had where both parties understand what's about to be in the contract before they sign. Like, I don't hand you a contract blindly and then expect you to understand what's in it. It's we've negotiated terms and then we both come up with paperwork that fits the terms that we've negotiated, but the negotiation is first. Rich niggas call it MDA. Oh, whatever the paperwork type is. You know what I'm saying? You got <laughs> all that shit. That's that shit. LLC, LLCs, goddamn, uh, you know, royalty paperwork, you goddamn, signed all that shit. Saying that you don't got no part of it, it, my company and my shit because I gave you the connect. And guess what? Once you sign, I can't go back and then later because I don't like it. Give me this. You know what life is? Life is the, 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 the locks under Bad Boys contract. Bitch, you signed. I know you mad about it. You may even get some <laughs> your friend telling you that, yeah, you morally right, but you signed. Life ain't about morals. Morals are for you, and hopefully the people around you will, uh, will live up to them. That's a guidance for your life, your act. Morals and values are how you live and the principles that you stand on. They do not guide the next person. And when you enter into a contract with another person and they told you what their values and morals are, you, hey, man, everybody need to live up to that shit. If I told you I was a, a, a crazy motherfucker that might kill somebody, I need you to understand that that's what I am. And I need to then live up to that. I can't get mad at you for treating me like that. I need to live up to that. No, that's what I told you I was. You right. And I and and then I might need to catch a body just to make sure that you understand. No, I understand. No, you good. You good, bro. But, but, <laughs> but what we not gonna do is act like I'm something different. What I'm not gonna do is then change up and then be like, oh, now it's time to be hotel, nigga. You hired me to be the hitman because you I told you this who I was, and now no, nigga. God bless it, be beloved. You know, be brother. This being past, we all together as one. You the bad. I can never take the life. No, I told you I was this. So then that's why you hired me. And now you done pay me this money. And we got this contract. And now I'm going to take your money. No, nigga. I be hot up when I bang white girls. Fuck this bullshit. I'm just saying. They be into it. Like, I'm, I'm done with this. 